Thanks for coming. Um, well, um, just a little bit about myself. I'm the co-founder and the CEO of Papaya Mobile. And um, Afflood is a division of Papaya Mobile. And uh, we have um, our headquarters in Beijing, and we have offices in San Francisco and London. That's why um, we are in a very unique position um, to tell you guys something that you probably have not heard of. Um, so what I'm going to talk about today is that um, I want you guys to realize that Chinese apps are starting to dominate and beat established Western firms on a global level. Um, so I'll just show some data first and tell you guys um, some of the things that we're working with the Chinese companies and trying to invade the international markets. Okay. Um, you probably have heard of WeChat. Um, you probably think WeChat as a primarily um, Chinese-focused um, application. WeChat is very dominant in China. As a matter of fact, all my grandparents who are in their 80s are using WeChat to send um, like messages and pictures to me every day. However, they are very, uh, they're growing very, very quickly outside of China too. By um, Q1 next year, um, their penetration outside of China is going to be 35%, versus WhatsApp is 39%. So it's catching up really, really quickly. Um, and their global MAUs right now is 300 million, versus WhatsApp is 450 million. And the valuation is actually much more than WhatsApp. Um, I listed the top 10 global app publishers in two 2013. Um, this, this data is only on iOS and Google Play. Just to tell you something, in China, um, actually Android is dominant, but Google Play does not exist on Android in China. So in China, there are about 20 uh, local app stores where people use to download their applications. So if you look at the ranking, this is primarily the, um, the, the data for international markets except for China. So as you can see that um, the top 10 um, games, um, there's one from China. And if you're talking about the top 10 apps, there are three from China. You probably have not heard of Sunji Mobile. And um, they make an application called Go Launcher. It's actually the largest launcher in the world, and they have several hundred million users outside of China. And a lot of people are using it, and they didn't realize that it's actually from China. Um, and of course, Tencent and Baidu, they are putting a lot of resources into the markets other than China, and they're growing very quickly too. So this is not including any Chinese user. It's all like non-Chinese users data. So um, I mentioned uh, Sunji Mobile. Very interesting. This is the data for top 10 non-gaming apps in the US. And all these like, other companies are US companies, except for one, as I mentioned, that Sunji Mobile. They're actually listed as the sixth in the US. Um, I'm going to spend a little bit more time um, on this slide, because um, I'm just going to give you guys a little bit uh, information about the companies that are putting their resources into the non-Chinese um, markets. So Afflood is helping a lot of them to come to the Western markets or the other international markets. Um, as a matter of fact, um, previously we saw a lot of games down there um, that are using us or helping uh, or working with us to go abroad. However, um, started about three quarters ago, uh, we saw more and more just traditional internet companies or like application companies started to put a lot of budget into uh, mobile advertising and trying to get users outside of China. The kind of budget I'm, that I'm talking about is enormous. Just to give you an example, one of our clients, which is a game company, they spent $2 million US dollars in three days um, 
early this year, trying to get a good ranking on their um, on App Store. And the other client um, who are working with us, who is an application company, their um, monthly budget for mobile advertising outside of China is two to five million U.S. dollars every month. Um, so um, you might ask me, why do application companies put so much money onto mobile advertising? Because applications, they don't monetize that well. Um, well, um, I was trying to figure out the reason as well, because all of a sudden, all the Chinese internet companies start to put money on applications, just in two to three quarters. Um, I talk with a lot of them, especially like Baidu, um, Qihu 360. These are one of the largest um, internet companies in China. And um, very interestingly, they see this market, the Chinese market, to be a little bit saturated. And they have a theory. They think that if you look at the other developing countries, including Southeast Asia, Middle East, and South Africa, you add all these regions together, the population is very similar to the population of China. However, there aren't any like big companies occupying these markets yet. So to them, they think that this is the next China and they really need to invest in it. They don't care about monetization at all right now. They just want users in these regions. That's why they don't think about monetization. They just put money into it and they want to make sure that they own the users in this region. And um, the other question that you might have is that, why do they use Afla to do it? Um, actually, for example, like for a lot of these big companies, they spend more than 60% of their overseas bar budget with Afla. Um, it's, um, it's because we are basically sort of the bridge between China and the Western world. We work with thousands of publishers outside of China, and we also, w w also work with 100 um, ads networks outside of China. So we actually do program Maddie Media Buy for these um, app and game companies to help them to buy traffic outside of China. So you might ask me, why don't they just buy traffic outside of China by themselves? So this is another thing that's very different. Um, as I mentioned that, Android is dominant in China, but Google Play does not exist in China. So um, actually in China, as a game company or app company, if you want to get traffic, you don't go to ads networks. You actually go to those 20 local app stores and buy ranking with them. And once you buy the ranking, you do revenue share with them. And then you get a lot of users and then monetization. So you don't even need to use ad network. So they're not very familiar with ads network. So when they, they turn to the markets outside of China, they're like, okay, what are we going to do? Is there any like, good solution for us to just, um, we give them the money and they give us users? Some of our clients, they told us, they're like, okay, we're looking for 200,000 installs every day for one application. Can you just help us? We'll give you the money. So uh, we actually have the solution for, for, for them to do it. And that's why we work a lot of like as networks and publishers outside of China. Because a lot of, the, all the, a lot of these companies, they give us exclusive deals, like exclusive campaigns to run for them. Um, as I mentioned that started from early 2013, um, most of the Chinese companies are investing in Southeast Asia. Um, a very good representative would be WeChat. They put a lot of resources into Southeast Asia, and for some of the countries, they're actually the largest messenger um, right now. However, started from late last year, we have started to see um, the Chinese companies, um, they're, they're starting to focus on like um, the North America, Europe, South America, and um, the other regions too. Um, this is our data um, from AppFlood. Um, last quarter, about 60% of our ad spend is from China. 
Um, our headquarters is in China, so um, our data is definitely like more China um, centric. However, because we work with so many different partners around the world, all of them told us that the budget from China has been growing so fast in the past two to three quarters. So it's, it's something that they cannot ignore. Um, this is the data from our system too. We're just comparing the Chinese advertisers, like where they're spending their, um, their budget and how much they're spending. As you can see that they really love the Middle East market because they think that the ARPU in the Middle East market is really high and there aren't uh, like a lot of competitors in that region yet. So they're actually spending 40 um, times more on that region compared to they spend in China. And there are other um, regions too. Um, so there are two big categories that are spending um, from China. One is games and the other is apps. So I'm going to talk a little bit about games um, here. So these are the big spenders. Some, a lot of them are actually public companies uh, and some of them are even like public companies in the US. And these are game companies. A lot of them are actually uh, of they produce very heavy games or like social gambling games. And um, the campaigns that they have, um, the, it's always very region targeted because they have very good localized um, games for different regions and they really care about the ROI. They don't care about the CPI that much. Um, and they also care a lot about um, the retention rate. However, for non-gaming apps, um, it's, it's very different. As I mentioned that a client of us came to us, they're just like, we want 200,000 uh, 200, installs every day. So basically what they're looking for is that I want to grab the land and I want massive uh, global volume. I don't, I don't care where the users are from, as long as they're users, I'm just going to grab them because right now it's still cheap. They view it as cheap. So actually they care about the cost too. They want it to be low cost per install. What we've seen, um, the cost would be like very low, 30 cents per user. But as I mentioned that since they're buying so many users every day, they're actually spending a lot of money on it. And um, they care about the reasonable quality because most of the apps don't have monetization yet, so they cannot look at the, look at the ROI. Um, what they care about is the retention rate. And uh, depends on the application. Some of the application are looking for more than 30% retention rate for next day, and some of them are looking for 50%. I'm going to talk about two case studies. One case study is from a Chinese gaming company, and the client name is Tap for Fun. So they have a top grossing um, app uh, game that's called um, King's Empire. Um, so previously they came to us, they were like, okay, we're looking for users in the US and we're willing to pay a really high CPI and can you guys ha like run the campaign for us because we want a lot of users. It turns out that they think, like we, we started a, the campaign with them, but because they need to compete with so many different uh, US companies in the US, um, they weren't, be, they weren't be able to get a lot of traffic um, in the US at the same time with the C CPI they expected. So we suggest them to run a global campaign with much lower CPI. And then after they try it, they find out there are several other countries actually has really high ARPU, and Middle East is one of them. Um, so they changed the strategy and started to focus a lot on Middle East and the, um, the ROI on, in Middle Mid East is so much higher than the US. Um, and this is some, uh, some data here. So once the campaign is stable, um, we are able to drive them 3,200 um, installs every day. The CPI is actually quite low, 40 cents. Um, and the click-through rate is about 20% and they were able to get really high ROI on this campaign. And um, the daily retention rate, um, they increased it from 50% to 80%. The other case study is the Sunji Mobile that I just mentioned. They have their application um, Go Launcher. So right now they have 350 million users um, globally and about 70% of it is actually outside of China. 
Um, they are requirement for us is that they want significant volume of quality users, um, but they, do, they really care about the CPI. Um, so before us, they really rely on word of mouth uh, because they're one of the earliest launchers on Google Play, so they got a lot of early users. But um, later, they think that they need as an ad strategy to acquire more users outside of China. So, um, but they can only pay a very low CPI because they're not a game. It's not a very well monetized. So they're only willing to pay CPI of 25 cents. Um, but they still need quality users. So it's very hard to really fulfill their requirements. Um, we ended up providing about 30,000 installs for them every day. Um, most of the users are actually from the developing countries, um, but they see very good retention rate on those users. The CPI is 25 cents, as I mentioned, and um, for some days we could provide 50,000 installs for them in one day. And um, in, in from April to May, we drove one point about 1.5 million installs for them. Okay, that's actually the end of the presentation because it's very informational. So I hope it gives you some new information about the international market. And um, if you guys have any questions, feel free to um, let me know. Thank you. Let's see, are there any questions out there? Actually, I, hmm, I actually have a question. So, sort of going back to like the Middle East and and Africa and Southeast Asia as like a new China, like a new population. How do you, I mean? It's obviously it's a really neat idea. How do you differentiate or keep your leadership in the types of campaigns that you're able to provide these advertise these these products? You know, going out into this market. Like once they get the idea, okay, yes, I want to be there. What how do you refine your product for them versus other competitors who like I'll also take you to Southeast Asia, Africa, and the Middle East? Sure. Um, one thing, I mean, like the Chinese culture, um, they really value trust. Mm -hmm. So our headquarters is based in Beijing. Okay. So we have long time relationship, business relationship with those companies. They, so I guess we have the advantage to, to just be located in China. Sure. And we work with like day by day. They, they have a lot of requirements. We just try our best to fulfill their requirements. And the other thing is that uh, compared to all the other Chinese competitors, we are actually the first programmatic media buy company in China. So programmatic is not so big in China yet. So in that market, China is a little bit behind. So we were able to really optimize the conversion rate for the campaigns yeah. and help them to find good quality user with very low CPI, with like, but in a very large volume. So that's all from like programmatic. So that's something that we are specialized in um, if we work with the Chinese advertisers. How is it different? I, I, it just like, why wouldn't everyone want to do this? Right, you, right? Like, it, I, what, what is, I mean, I get why the Chinese publishers do it. Why wouldn't Western publishers or, I don't know, Middle Eastern publishers ask you the exact same question and mm -hmm. want to use the exact same methodology just to attack that market? Mm -hmm. um, just to give you an example, I'm not trying to say like bad things about our competitor. Actually, Immobi is our partner, okay. um, but they also have some presence in China. Mm -hmm. They actually, they're investing a lot in China. So, um, in some campaigns, they're actually also trying to get Chinese di ad advertisers directly and trying to help them to drive traffic. Yeah. Um, as I mentioned that if you don't have like a big presence in China, um, sometimes it's just like the time difference. If your engineers are not in China, it's very hard to fulfill their, um, their requirements, like yeah. the campaigns, because it's changing every day, yeah. right? Um, and the second thing is that um, in Mobi, it's, it's relying on their own like network, yeah. traffic, uh, versus for us, we work with, besides like we have thousands of publishers, we also work with 100 like global other ads, ads network, including in Mobi. So we will be able to help our advertisers to buy traffic from all these different ad networks. So all the ad networks around the world are our partners. 
Would that make sense? It, it does. I'm sorry, last question, sorry, it's really, so how about customization? Like one of the things which is great or really hard in China, right, is having to customize for the different stores, different payment. What is the customization challenge going into Southeast Asia, Middle East, Africa? I mean, these are different places, different languages, different cultures, everything. How do you manage that? Sure, um, that's a very good question. We have a specialized team to help them to, to localize um, their product as well as the creatives and also have different messaging for different market when you do advertising because that's very important. We need to look at a conversion rate for different regions. And in terms of the different like app stores and even carriers for those different uh, countries, it, it really depends on the product. If the product itself is on Google Play, usually the advertisers would want us to promote it on Google Play. So we have a lot of online like um, method and, and the network for them to do that. However, for some of the applications, they're not on Google Play, because some of the applications are actually app stores. Because yeah. some of the applications that we're working with are productivity or personalization applications, that's fine, just promote it on Google Play. And if you are app stores, actually it's like they can't exist on Google Play. They have to be promoted in an offline way um, to Southeast Asian countries or like Middle East countries. So we actually have an offline team to work with the offline partners, like carriers, manufacturers, to have them pre-installed um, onto the cell phones for, that, for those countries. Yep. Sorry. Others? Yes. Yeah, sorry. Yes. Okay, thanks. Um, yeah, that's the, the slide I was going for. Uh, so uh, 3,200 daily uh, installs at the CPR at uh, 40 cents, uh, that seems very reasonable. Uh, just curious, um, is that across, uh, what geos is this across? And uh, is this across different devices, um, Android and iOS? Um, and also, when you say quality users, uh, you're, uh, I think you're saying that these are all quality users. What defines quality, um, mm -hmm. if you're able to say? Sure. Um, so this is a global campaign. As I mentioned, that first they launched a U.S. only campaign uh, with a CPI of um, about two to three dollars on Android, uh, but they realized that the competition is just uh, something that they cannot afford um, in the U.S. So they we conv com convinced them to launch a global campaign. Um, so most of the users from these three three thousand um, installs are from, as I mentioned, mi Middle East. Southeast Asia. Um, some of them are from Brazil too. Actually, some of these countries uh, monetize really well. Um, the ARPU is not that like much lower than the, the American users, but the user acquisition cost is so much lower. Um, this is mainly on Android. And in terms of quality users, I mentioned the retention rate here, um, but um, actually the 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 developer that cares the most about is the, um, is the ARPU, actually LTV. Um, it really depends on, um, I mean like, they see one to $1.5 dollars on some, on some of the user, I mean like in, um, in some of the regions. So they really like those regions because the CPI is really low. So they came back to us and tell us that, okay, these are the regions that are the focus for us try to get, a, get us like on the ranking for these regions and try to get, help us to get more users. So that's how we ended up like focus some, to focus some countries for them. Um, an example, Egypt, they actually found some like really good user stores from Egypt. So we actually got a lot of users from Egypt for, for them. Yeah. Cool, I think we're out of time. Thank you very much. Thank you. And